Get your hammers and your screwdrivers out because John Allen's going to tell you how to use them properly. This is Tricks of the Trade here on 93.1. Presentation of West 10 Fence Company and Economy Siding and Windows. Text line is open at 731-410-7560 or the call-in line at 731-891-6161. That's how you get in touch. That's how you play the game with us this morning. And here's John Allen. What's up, man? Hey, I'm doing all right, Jim. You're putting a lot of pressure on me already early this morning. Got tools and show them how to use them. And Ooh. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to play a little bit this morning. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we have something else we've got to play with. I'm getting a big bad hum on your microphone for some reason. Can you fish that one out there right there in front of you and uh, see if we can get get it up and running. How about this? Yeah, that's much better. Turn, just, we'll shut that we'll one. We'll use both of them. <laughs> this is true. Try try the one on your, that one. Wait a minute. All right. Nah, all right. Give it, give it to me now. All right. How about, ooh, how about that? Got, got a little squealy, but that's okay. Yeah, well, that's all right. We got a... Maybe those headphones. There you go. Well, this fire and quality stuff I got right here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to, and y'all, y'all going to oh, force me to take something out of my paycheck. Mm. <laughs> How you like your cushion, though? It's pretty. It looks like a little log. It you does. Wanna, you yeah. see it? Yeah, there it is. See, here we go. There you go. See, it looks just like a log to everybody else, but. Well, you see, you, you asked me, and the way you way you said it, I thought that was proper. You said, would you bring me a cushion? It, there it is. There you go, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, makes, man. <laughs> makes everything feel better down here. <laughs> yes, it does, boy. I tell you what, the long term on some of these uh, seating facilities here is not fun. Yeah, after a while, you feel like you're sitting on a porcupine or something, yeah. you know, oh, down yeah. here yeah. with the expiring chairs that they provide then, us then down the here. The numbness begins to set in. Oh, you know? yeah, well. I got enough of that from the neck up. I don't need Yeah, well, up. you know. <laughs> Man, you brought, you brought a bunch of stuff. It looks like you're going to rewire the store here at the Old Country Store. Well, you know, we talk about stuff, and I had a phone call yesterday, and it was a, a friend of mine, and, and she said, what are you going to talk about tomorrow? And I said, I don't know. She said, well, you have the ability of video. So why don't you show us what some of those things are that you talk about? Because some of us out here don't have a clue <laughs> as to what you're saying, even though you're explaining it real good. Yeah. But if we had some visual aids, it would uh, help out a little bit. So... I brought a few things that we'll uh, jump into uh, on the show and uh, kind of see uh, how people take to these and gives them a little idea what to look for when they might need a little help on something like this. Yeah, so. that, uh, that, that's always good. I, I had several comments about uh, the proper proper use of the, uh, the plunger last week, which was mm. very interesting. I... Uh, had to use that night for last on an after hours call mm. and uh, they had one of them little toy plungers oh no one little the hard rubber ones. oh yeah. man and they were plunging oh, away oh. and couldn't get anywhere on anything the person was sweating i kid not <laughs> sweating she said i've tried everything i could to get this out and i can't get it to push or do whatever it's supposed to do right I said, let me try. So I picked up little Blackie right there and uh, put it down in the water. And with one plunge, <laughs> there she went. And, and everything went to New right. York City. There you go. With one stroke of the pen, and they had a, had a house call. That's after right. Hour, house call on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it, if it works, it works. You know? Well, it, it works. Between, you know, um, these nasty clogs you got out, I tell everybody, you know, get that plunger I showed you a picture of. Yeah. And then there's another neat, neat device called a closet auger. That boy, if the plunger won't do it, the auger will if you've got something hung up into your uh, toilet. Right. Now, I'm going to bring that with me one Saturday. I got it in the truck right now, but... Um, it still got stuff on it from a couple of nights ago. <laughs> Leave it in the truck. I, I don't want to. I don't want to bring that in here amongst all the vittles and <laughs> no, stuff. No, so, no, no. but uh, you know, yeah, we got some stuff to talk about this morning, and uh, we'll take a few texts and a few yeah. phone calls. And I'm gonna do something today. I've been waiting to do for a long time. We're gonna fire up the grill. 
Are you really? Maybe cold. I yeah. don't care. Well, it's not that won't be that bad. It's supposed, the sun's supposed to come out and warm us up a little bit. I've, I've got to clean mine before I can use it. I'm afraid I'm going to set the neighborhood on fire. Well, I'm fixing to tell you what to do. <laughs> Good. Because on, I man. did mine last night. You know, your, your grill's all been... Uh, Gunked up. Gunked up. <laughs> That's a scientific That's word. That's a scientific you know? word. I didn't do uh, a white coat for that one. You got, got things all mighty and be growing on it, and it just looks nasty. Mm-hmm. And that nothing I hate more than to scrape a grill. You know, you got to get out with a, the, the wire brush, yep. and, and it's never where you want it, or it's all worn out from last year. <laughs> but you don't have to do that. All you need is a pair of pliers. Say what? Yeah. <laughs> No, I, was, I was with you up until that. Now, okay. Well, you know, like you said, it's all greasy and yucky and all yeah. that. You reach down with a pair of pliers to pick it up. Oh, get pick the grates. Yeah, the grates get the grates and pick yeah. them up. Yeah, 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 and yeah. take them in the house and put them in the oven it, and put it on self-cleaning. You have to send the wife away to do that because mine would shoot me if I brought that thing in the house. Do you have to tell them everything? Yeah, at home you do. <laughs> We're all retired now. They're they're there. You know? <laughs> well, uh oh, you got a point there. Yeah. But no, the, the, I'm serious. Put them in the oven. Okay. And melt the gunk off. It it just incinerates everything, and you got just a nice little pile of ashes when you're all right. done there. You have cremated the remains on that uh, <laughs> from last year's yeah. chicken and beef. Ooh. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, it, it really works. And then you you take, when they cool down, you take them off, take them out there, set them down, spray them with a little Pam. Uh-huh. And uh, you know that Pam they got now that's made for grills? Yeah, for hotter temperatures. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It, it, good uh, stuff. It, it sticks on there pretty good. It does. And, yeah, I uh, use it a lot. You spray them down real good, and then when they get messed up again, take them back and put them in the oven. Yeah, that's not a, I, that's I, not a bad I, I learned that little trick two or three years ago, and... Uh, it works. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. That's that's not bad at all. Now the other, the hard part for me on my grill though, it's a gas grill. You know, it's a yeah. propane propane mm, so grill. Mine. And uh, it, it's getting down inside of it under the burners where all, all the drippings go and then run supposedly run off into that little that little drip bucket that hangs under there. Well, there's more gunk on that board down there than there is room in the drip bucket. So you got to put a bigger pan under there and then scrape all that stuff. Down in the hole, hmm. I've thought about using some some of that oven uh, degreaser. I guess that would work, wouldn't it? Break it up and make it run where it would run anyway. Uh, probably would, but when you f- better make sure all that stuff gets off, or you might taste it in your pork yeah, chop. Yeah, you know, yeah, you'd have to fire it up and get it good and hot. I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, right. I I call that flavor down there. I don't ever get any of that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably right. Though. That's kind of like country ham in you. The white beans, uh-huh. you know, that's just flavor. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, that, but, but I guess sometimes you may have to clean that out. But I'll look at it again. I might change my mind. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> yep, 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 One of those yep. things. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So, what, uh, where, where are we going with all of this equipment you've got over there today? You're just really anxious to get into all well, this, I'm, aren't I'm you? I'm intrigued by it because there's plumbing stuff over there, there are cartons that it came in, there's wires. Huh. Uh, I think I see some uh, wire strippers and maybe some channel locks and some other things over there. You know your tools, don't I you? I do. I just don't know what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're well, here. Well, all right. Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to do a little teaser right now. All right. And because uh, we got lots to talk about today, and, and we would really like to, you know, take some texts and phone calls and things of that nature. But, you know, we talk on the show a lot. About, uh, and I use the term shark bite a yeah. lot. Oh, yeah. And I, I will have to say, of all the changes in the plumbing uh, profession, uh, the shark bite fittings are something that just revolutionized and made plumbing repair very, very easy. It's a way of taking. Uh, you have a damaged pipe or a leaking pipe or a bad section in a pipe, and, and you can cut it out, snap it together, no glue, no leaks, no effort, and it's there forever. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, you know, something. Now, if you're looking, this is what's called a sharp bite coupling. Now, this particular one... 
is three quarters of an inch to take two three quarter of an inch pipes. You're gonna put them together, and uh, you'll notice something about this that uh, little might wonder what in the world it is. And like inside of this end, are we catching all of this on on video? Is this all working? Yeah, we, we got it. All right, you got this little thing in the end of it, little insert okay. that wiggles around. Well, that's in case you're using soft pipe. That little insert will go inside of a soft piece of pipe, like this one. Yeah. And uh, if you are using hard pipe, like CPVC, like this one, right. you don't need that. So you just take your needle nose pliers and you pull it out, and that's what it looks like when you pull it out. You just grab it and yank it out. Right. No big deal. The, when you take it out, you've got the side on the other side that uh, is open, and you stick your finger in it, and you see some little little barb-looking things down in there, and that's what grabs the pipe. Well, it's really kind of ingenious because you can take this simple fitting and join two pieces of pipe together that are not the same kind of material. For instance, on this piece of clear uh, poly pipe, and this is the kind of pipe we use a lot in remodeling because it flexes and bends, you get it in a roll, and uh, when it freezes, or if it freezes, it'll swell up. Oh. It won't split. Okay. So if you take that and put it in the end of the, uh, the fitting here and simply push, it's there. And it's not coming off. It's not coming off unless you have a special tool. Now then, if you take a piece of like CPVC pipe, like right. you have here, where I took the insert out of the end, and you stick it in the other end, and you simply push, right. it's there. It's there. You're done. No glue, no cleaning, no nothing. It's it's just there, and there ain't no way you can pull it apart. But let's say you made a mistake. Uh -huh. There's this little ring right here at the top that's kind of a light brown. Right. They make a little tool that I didn't bring in with me, but you simply clamp it on and push down on it, and it will release it to where you can pull that pipe out. Can you use that fitting again? And you can use this fitting over and over again. So the little barbs in there are directional. And when you push in, it mm -hmm. lets it slide in. But when you put a little outward tension on it, they grab. That now, it's kind of like a coon trap. You, you yeah. know how to catch a coon? You Coons are not that, they're smart, but not that smart. <laughs> but... You drill a hole in a board, and you drive nails in, pointing in one direction. Yeah. And when the coon puts his hand in there, and he'll grab something, he ain't got sense enough to let go, and he can't pull, pull itself back out. Okay. So these pipes, you can't pull them back out. But that is called a shark bite fitting. Interesting. And you can get these in elbows. You can get them in T's. You can get caps, like if you just have a line that blows loose, you can cap the end of that pipe. You can get male fittings that will screw in. You can get female fittings that receive the male fittings. All these things that we're fixing to not even be able to say yeah, anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, Thursday you told me we couldn't use those terms anymore. Oh, I know, and I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> we can use them all weekends, apparently. Yeah, yeah well, uh, 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 occasional. <laughs> How like it is at the house, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but, you know, now, there's all different kinds of pipes out there. Now, this will work also if you had a copper pipe that you wanted to put in here. Okay. Now, this manila colored pipe, this is called CPVC, and uh, you use that for hot and cold water. And you use this clear pipe for hot and cold water. Now, if you've got other kinds of pipes like PVC, not CPVC, but it's a white pipe, yeah. you may have to get different size fittings. Now, these fittings come anywhere from 3 eighths of an inch up to 
two inches. I mean, you can put wow. big pipes together. And this little contraption right here, that one little fitting is about eight bucks. Um, because they are solid brass. But think of the time that you've saved yeah, I by know. not having to, let's say you used to when you would put fittings on CPVC, you would have to clean the pipe, you'd have to put a cleaner on it, then you'd have to glue it, then you'd right. have to clean your fitting, then you glue your fitting and you stick it together right. and then wait an hour before you can put pressure on the pipe. Now, this took me every bit of three seconds to pop together yeah. and you're done. You're ready to turn the water on. So I tell people, you ought to keep some of these around the house. You never know when a, a line is going to break loose or something malfunctions. You need to cap a line. And uh, emergencies happen around the house. Now, the funny thing about this, I want you to look at what I'm doing. I can sit here and turn this pipe and do anything I want to with it. It still won't come out, and it's watertight. How do it do that? How, I don't know, but know? I'm telling you, not a drop of water is going to come out of that fitting. That's amazing. Well, it's worth the eight bucks then. Isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, they're very versatile and uh, reusable. And uh, if you get a few of these, keep them around the house and a few sections of pipe about five foot long in case of an emergency, especially the cold weather that uh, we had this winter. Uh, you never know when a line will pop loose and you got to make an emergency repair. Whereas if you call the plumber, you may have to wait three or four days before he's able to get out there to you because he's so backed up. But these are really great uh, products that uh, anybody can use. And uh, I highly recommend, you know, having those around. That is a, one of the best things you can get for a do-it-yourselfer that... Uh, take care of some problems around the house so if, if you're going to buy one of those it is called a shark bite fitting. this is a sharp bite coupling coupling okay yeah if it's an elbow or turns a corner it's a shark bite l okay or a shark bite t if right. it's a t you know uh and they have pictures on the wrapper <laughs> to, even, to, yeah. <laughs> to even help you out but but most, you need to know what kind of pipe you're dealing with yeah, yeah. Right. Because you want to make sure it'll fit in yeah. there. And it is a precise fit. It, it, it doesn't reach out and grab it. Yeah. So you can't put a half-inch pipe in a three-quarter fitting. You've got to have the proper size fitting. Gotcha. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, they got these at, like, Ace Hardware, all your big box stores, any of the, most anybody that sells uh, plumbing supplies, you can get these. And uh, it's just a good thing to know about. And that's how easy it is to put it together. So I wanted everybody to, to see that this morning. There we go. Man, so, that's, that's good. There that is, is good. display number one. Display number one. <laughs> we have more video tutorials coming your way oh, here yeah. on uh, Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. We're glad to have you along here on 93.1. We're going to take about a two-minute commercial break to hear from our good sponsors. And we'll be right back with John Allen. Chris Carter. And I'm Shannon Nordstrom. Together, we're the Motor Medics on Under the Hood. Join us for fun and free automotive advice. If your car is feeling ill, we're the doctors, and we're here for you. Tune in and be entertained while learning more about your car and how to save money on ownership costs. You can ask questions and find out more at underthehoodshow.com. And don't forget about our Facebook page. Join the Motor Medics each week on Under the Hood. The Under the Hood Show, every Saturday morning from 6 till 8. Presented by Gene Langley Ford in Humboldt. The dealership service built. At h and Block, tax time is our favorite time of year. It's when our tax pros get to do what they love the most, help people. By getting to know you, they make sure your return gets done right. It's not just numbers, boxes, and forms. It's personal care, so you get every credit and deduction you deserve. With an average of 10 years' experience, our tax pros get your taxes done right. Just one of the many ways Block has your back. h and Block, with six locations in West Tennessee, Dyersburg, Ripley, Humboldt, Martin, South Fulton, and Union City. Call 731-285-0749. Would you get on an airplane if you knew it had a 50% chance of crashing? You may be riding that plane right now. If you have your money in a 401k or IRA and you plan to take out the recommended percentage each year when you retire, your chance of running out of money is 
50%. But there's a better and safer way to secure your income in retirement. Discover how in a free book called Rescue Your Retirement. This wealth building strategy has never had a losing year in more than a century. In fact, even the man who invented the 401k now prefers this method instead. Get Rescue Your Retirement free for just a small shipping charge and enjoy a safe landing and a comfortable retirement. Get this free book and make sure you don't run out of money. Hurry, this offer is extremely limited. To get your free copy, just go to growwealthsafely.com. That's growwealthsafely.com to discover how to rescue your retirement. Growwealthsafely.com. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Yeah, you know the music. It's Saturday morning. It's Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. We've been talking about shark bite fittings and pipes and plumbing and all kinds of good things. Right now, we need to talk about fencing. Oh, yeah. I'm kind. I'm talking about the one around your yard, not with the swords. Uh, oh, <laughs> I thought we were doing a Geico commercial or something. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> oh, oh there's poor a, there's, a, there's a new one on that makes even less sense than the rest of them. I was talking to Greg Woods about this the other day. Have you seen the, uh, I think it's a Liberty Mutual, where the guy walks up, thinks he's buying a hot dog at a hot dog cart. Yeah, and wet the guy, teddy bear. <laughs> selling wet teddy bears. What is that all about? <laughs> That was something totally off the wall. Oh, and, boy, was and, it ever. But with that one, it's on right now with the scoop. There it is. I yeah, kind of like that one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolato. Chocolato. <laughs> yes, yes. Which has nothing to do with fencing. I don't know how we got I didn't yeah, know how I, we got I, there. I My warm know. sense of humor put us over there. West End Fence Company. They, uh, they are the best in the business. And they do all kinds of fencing. They do it for you on a regular basis. They do. Uh, you know, when I need something, I just give them a call. And because... They're knowledgeable. I don't have to explain it to them. Yeah. I mean, they know what they're doing. Everything's, the, the pricing is great. They jump out there. They get going. And, um, you know, they, uh, they they got these little things that dig these post holes. Yeah. And it's funny how the dirt just disappears. <laughs> That's but magic. It, you know, they put the post in there, and you'd think they'd have leftover dirt. Yeah. But I don't know what happens, but it. It's gone. You can't even tell it was there. Maybe they're selling it to the fire ants. It had something to do with the moon, I think. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. But no, they they get in. They'll they'll get your holes put in, get your posts put in. They'll come back and pull your fence the next day, and it is a rigid fence. I've seen fences that you put them up there, and then you just wiggle them yeah. back and forth. They, no, oh, yeah. they, they set these posts in right, and. Uh, put in any kind of fence you want gates now they can put up gates that won't droop now that's an art and that's that's the main reason that they came to my house oh that's when, right when you we, and i talked you know that's right we uh you know nobody likes a droopy gate no you know and, and you gotta like the old cattle gates you gotta pick up on them swing them out now these you just one kick of the foot and it just swings wide, wide open, open and absolutely. doesn't drag on the ground and when the wind blows, it stays put. That's right. Yeah. It does. It does. It so, does. no, I, I highly recommend, folks, if you need any kind of fencing done around the house, to give West 10 Fence Company a call. I can personally speak for them. Uh, speak for them. They, uh, they've done all of my fencing. They've done fencing at my house. They've done fences at properties. They put the gate up at my office. And, and uh, they have assisted me working with many, many of our customers yeah. in doing things. So I highly recommend them. And they're local. Um, they get in, they get out. It doesn't look like a bunch of hoodlums coming out to your house. I mean, they're, they're decent-looking people. Yeah, they are. They're yeah, dressed yeah. nicely. Got the hair combed yep. and everything. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Give them a call at 731-668-5959, located at 2158 Hollywood Drive, or you can reach uh, the sales department at R Pennington and the number one, R Pennington one at yahoo.com. It's that simple. Hmm. Now, we're going to let you dive back into your pile of, uh, of uh, goodies over there. But first, we need to remind everybody, the text line is open this morning. We need to hear from you, 731-410-7560. Or you can call us on the uh, dial-in line, 731-891-6161. And it's that simple. You know, we, uh, I've talked to folks uh, many, many times in the past about, you know, when your garbage disposal gets clogged up. Uh-huh. And uh, there's two little tools 
that you need to have around the house that will really save you a lot of money. And uh, on a garbage disposal, when one gets jammed up to where it doesn't spin, uh, there's a little button underneath it. you got to feel for it. A little round red button. Sometimes it's square. It's a yeah. reset button. Yeah. And if you reach under there and push it up till it clicks, and then you turn your disposal on, if it's still clogged up, turn your switch right back off. Then you got to get in to get rid of the, the clog. Well, I have told folks that all you need is a, an Allen wrench, and I've got one right here. It's a quarter-inch Allen wrench, okay. and underneath your disposal, right in the middle of it, there's a hole, and this Allen wrench goes right up in the hole, and you stick it up there, and you grab it, and then all you got to do is turn right or left. You can't mess up. And most of the time, it will free that drum with whatever, maybe a chicken bone or something that's hung up in there. Right. And you'll be able to break it free, flip it on, and it'll sling it out, grind it out, or whatever. Now, when you buy a disposal, this little wrench comes with it. Not like these. This is just a, multi, a set of multi-Allen uh, wrenches. But it's a single Allen wrench that most people will throw it away or they'll put it in a drawer and um, not know what it's there for. But this will instantly save you at least $125 first time it gets jammed up. And you'll be able to free most any obstruction inside your garbage disposal. Well, let's just say you don't have one of these or you lost it. There is another tool that I keep with me all the time that's not even meant for a garbage disposal, but it really comes in handy. Now, this device I'm fixing to show you is actually for putting in kitchen faucets. Okay. It's to reach that nut up under your faucet that's behind the tub of your sink. Right. So it's called a basin wrench. Yeah. And that's this little device right here. Now, I got one. You can get, the, the, you can get a basic one or like mine. I've got it to where it will telescope out if you got to reach up in there and get it. Right. But the idea of it is it's got a jaw right here that it uh, you're able to reach up, grab a nut, and then you can twist it. See, I can kind of unscrew my finger right there, there you, you know. Go. And if you want to go the other direction, you simply turn it around and grab it, and then you can do it this way. Right. Now, on a disposal, on just about all of them, if you were to look down inside your disposal, there's a center nut right there. You'll look down. Get you a little light. Well, if you'll just drop this down in it, and then you can spread these jaws open to grab that nut, and you're on top, you just turn it. And if you want to turn it the other way, you'll flip it over, straddle that nut like it is my finger. Right. And you will just simply turn it, and with very little ease, you'll break loose that obstruction and be able to pull it out. And that'll save you another 100 to $150 freeing up a disposal. Right. Uh, most of the time when people sink stop up and they have a disposal, it's because something has lodged in there and the water can't flow through it to get into the drain. Well, once you free up your disposal, you'll find that water will drain on through and, and works pretty good. So this is called a basin wrench. Uh, they'll cost you about 10 bucks, or you can get one a little fancy with an extended uh, head on it, like yep. mine here, and uh, it'll cost you about 18 bucks. But uh, it's one of these things, once you buy one, you'll probably never use it until you really need it. Yeah. And yeah. once you need it, that tool will pay for itself the first time. So that's just kind of one of those odd little things you might find in some people's uh, toolbox yep. and not realize what in the world it's for. So this is real good for putting in a kitchen sink or for unstopping your garbage disposal. Yeah. Either way you want to do it. In my toolbox, they come in very handy for waiting down the business car with John's phone number on it. <laughs> Well, <laughs> that, that works too, right? That works. Yeah, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. So, 
Now, we got some other little things over here okay. that uh, we talk about a lot. It has to do, and I'll, I'll do the first one, is a switch. Now, you see everybody has these in their walls. This is called a single pole switch. And if you were to open it up, it's got two little screws here on the back. And if you looked on the back of it, there's two little holes right here. Now, keep that in mind for a minute because I'm going to jump over here to something else I got a picture of. Most everybody's house is wired with Romex cable. Right. And if you'll look number one, it, I got a cable here that's white. I've got one here that's yellow. And I've got one that is orange. Now the color will tell you what size, what gauge wire is in it. Used to it wouldn't be that way. Back when I first started work, they were all the same color. But you could read on the side of the cable, and there's little, little, little stamps right here on the cable that will tell you what the cable's called. Like this is an NM cable. That's a, just an electrical term. Okay. And uh, then it's stamped on here. And, uh, let's see. It'll give you the date the cable was made and what gauge wire it is. So, on switches and receptacles a lot, you'll use a 14 gauge, which is white. Okay. Now, in this cable, you've got three wires. You've got a black wire, which is your hot. You have a naked wire <laughs> that's uh, your ground wire. And then you got the white wire, which is your neutral. Now, when you go to a switch, you're only when the, the purpose of a switch is you are breaking the circuit of the hot wire only. You don't have to worry about these other ones. Right. But you got a cable like this going into your box, and you got these three different wires sticking in here. Well, you're going to be putting one of these wires on one terminal, and you're going to be putting the other wire on the other terminal. Now, with a switch, it don't matter which one goes where, uh, because all you're doing is breaking one wire. Now, I could take a pair of needle nose pliers, and I could put a crook in the end of this, and I could hook it onto this terminal, tighten it down with a screwdriver, and it would be just fine. Or, I could take it, since it's a 14 gauge wire and this switch is rated uh, for a 14 gauge which is 15 amps that wire will precisely fit in that little hole right here in the back and you push it in and it's there you don't have to tighten the screw down you don't have to anything. tighten the screw up you don't have to do anything you can take the other one and put it in right there and it's done then your ground wire goes here on the other side, and it will attach right here. Now this one, you'll have to put a crook in it, like so. And then you can reach up here and hook it on. And then take a screwdriver and tighten it up. And there you have a complete assembly. Now, used to, they've changed all this, but a lot of times uh, when NM first came out, everything was wired with a 12 gauge wire, which is this yellow one. Right. And uh, you would use this 14 wire for your switches. But they changed the codes, and you got to use the same gauge wire on whatever circuit you're using. Well, these switches and receptacles were rated for uh, 15 amps, but people were trying to hook 12-gauge wire to them. Well, the first thing you would note 
if I had tried, is if I took this 12 gauge wire, it wouldn't fit in that hole. It's too little. And that's, that's to keep you from burning something up by having a mismatched electrical system. But then you can use this 14 gauge here. I got another piece here to run to a receptacle. Now, this is a common receptacle that you would find uh, in anybody's home. And uh, you notice it's got uh, copper colored terminals on one side and it's got silver colored on the others. The copper is the hot wire. The silver is the ground wire, I mean the neutral, and then your bare copper goes on the, uh, the screw lug right here. Now, if you look at the face of this receptacle, you'll see these two little slots. And one's bigger than the other. Right. Well, the big one, you would think, would be for the hot wire because that's where the electricity is. But it's not. That actually goes to the silver side, which is your neutral. So knowing the difference here keeps your polarity right. So you you want to get your hots and your neutrals not mixed up because yeah. if you get them crossed, boom, you just, Blow it up. you know, yeah. you trip a breaker. So same way with um, these receptacles as you do with switches, you can either use these terminals to hook up the wire or you can use uh, stab in connections in the back now this receptacle like the switch is rated for 15 amps so if you had a cable like this which many people have uh, in their home on their receptacles this is rated this is number 12 cable and this rated for 20 amps you might want to try to put it in there but it won't go in the hole so it's kind of keeps you from putting a, a smaller receptacle than what your wire is capable of doing kind of a safety device but like I did before your black wire will stab in the back and it's there forever and the white wire will go in on this side and then your ground wire like we did before, you'll put a little, little crook in it, and you'll hook it on, and tighten it down, and you're done. So if you can hook these up and know that the black goes on the copper, and the white goes on the silver, you can change out a receptacle just as good as anybody can. Wow. So that's an easy uh, thing to know, and. Uh, you know, people have trouble with receptacles. Um, very common problems. If you have one that might be original to your house, and you've been using it a lot, so you know you plug something in, all of a sudden the male end of that cord that plugs into here wants to fall out, and right. it won't stay in place, and and a bad connection will cause this uh, receptacle to heat up. So. If you've got one that you've plugged something into it and it won't stay, uh, you can change it out and and get one to go in there just fine. So, now you know about as much about receptacles as I do, and uh, maybe that'll help you uh, change one out and uh, save yourself having to call an electrician. There you go. So It looks so easy when you do it. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's not hard at all. Now, I'm going to mess you up after a while when I tell you what that's for. Looks like a little tiny ladder. That's we'll, right. We'll yeah. talk about that in a moment. We have a phone call coming in. Let's see if we can get these folks to tie it in with you, John. Go ahead. Good morning. Are you with me this Good morning? Good morning. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I got a question about a light switch. All right. Uh, whenever I buy a receptacle or a light switch, I always to buy the higher end i just say you pay more you get more right all right i put in this light switch and it's uh it's stiff like when you flip it on or off it gives a real audible click 
Okay. What in the world did I buy? It worked. Well, you, you, you get what I'm saying? You, know, usually you flip a light switch on, it's just real easy. This one, it's stiff. It's been up there for over a year now. Still stiff. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You can just hear it click when it comes on or off. You know, you've got a good light switch. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, a lot of the older right. style light switches, it really is a click. It's contacts popping together. The... Uh, more okay. common switches are mercury switches uh, and, and silent switches where it just kind of slides on an internal part, which, uh, I don't know. I got one right here. We, we may take one apart one day, and I'll show you on the air what the inside looks like. But, uh, it, uh, but it, it's something that... Um, you didn't buy anything wrong. You're just going to hear a click. And the heavier, right. the heavier switches, you'll find this more in the 20 amp rated switches. They will click because you've right. actually got two pieces of metal popping together. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So don't worry about it. You, you did okay. Well, I, I wasn't worried about it. I just wondered what the difference was between it and my other lights switches in the house. Well, that, that that's awesome. it. It uh, The higher rated switches sometimes will still click. Okay. Uh, you can buy them that are silent. Okay. Uh, you just have to look for it on the side. Okay? Oh. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank All right. You. Thanks for calling me. Thank you, Caller. We appreciate that. We're going to take another commercial break. And for those of you who are not familiar with the show, as uh, a lot of folks are, you're wondering why are these guys on the radio showing us things? Well, that's because we are also on y'all.com. You go to y'all.com on YouTube. Is that right, John? Yep. No, oh, just just y'all. Just go to y'all.com. Uh, that was John Rawl, who is Mr. Y'all. And, uh, yeah, just go to y'all.com, and you can not only hear what's going on, but you can see what's going on. And all these little tutorials will make a whole lot more sense to you. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll continue with John Allen's Tricks of the Trade on 93.1. Emerges a truck that will make the ground shake. Shake. The all-new Ford F-150. And it's the final days of Truck Month. The final days. It's the final days. At Golden Circle Ford Lincoln of Jackson. The all-new 2021 F-150. The truck that can move mountains, boats, bricks. The toughest F-150 to date. With its best in class. Available towing and payload. Tougher than before. Smarter than and super savings now during Truck Month at Golden Circle Ford Lincoln of Jackson. The best ride quality, stability, and interior refinement ever. 12-inch touchscreen, multiple cameras, as well as Pro Trailer Backup Assist. Save huge money now and save even more on remaining new 2020 models. Up to 12 grand off. Golden Circle Ford Lincoln of Jackson. The final days of Truck Month. We'll beat any dealer's out the door price on your new Ford. We guarantee it. We pay you $2,500. Golden Circle Ford, Lincoln of Jackson. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online, and on the 45 Bypass. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. And we are back on 93.1, Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. The phone number is 731-891-6161. Put you right in the phone box with John, or you can text us on the Victory Honda text line at 731-410-7560. What are the little trinkets have you got in there in your bag of goodies over there today? Well, you know, we talk about GFCI uh -huh. receptacles in the house, and they're a little different. And so I brought one with me today to kind of show what they look like on the back side because there are a few other little features here that you need to know about on these in dealing with a GFCI. Now, particular one that I got right here is a heavy-duty one. Now, this okay. is for 20 amps. This will 
you put these in your kitchen a lot because you can hook your skillet and your coffee pot up and your receptacle yeah. don't get hot. So the first thing you'll notice on the front of it is that there's a little T-slot on this uh, front of this receptacle where the, the other ones I was showing you just went up and down. Right. Well, this is for 15 amps, but this one is for 20 amps. And sometimes on 20 amp devices, the the male end of the plug, you've got one uh, uh, prong going up and down, yeah. and the other one goes sideways. sideways. Yeah. And that will fit into this right here. But the, the old ones, the regular plug-ins, both of them go up and down, they will also go into that. Right. So, and then you got two little buttons here on a GFCI. One says test, and the other one says reset. Okay. And then there is a little bitty, teeny tiny light right there, a little circle that you don't really notice, don't even see it. A lot of times if your receptacles get dirty, you, you can't even see it, so you got to wipe it off. But when that receptacle is working properly you will see that little light flashing i mean it's just a little tiny red light uh -huh. so if you wanted to go in there and test your receptacle you could go in there and push the test button and you'd hear click right and that would cut this receptacle entirely off and then you hit the reset button and push it in till it clicks. And sometimes, if you're like me and you got big fingers, you can't push it in far enough right. to hear it click. So you have to use the end of a a pencil or a pen or a <laughs> screwdriver to where you put it on that button and push it in until it clicks. And when it does, it'll energize. But you'll see something on these, and and I see people get this mixed up and they end up having to call an electrician because on a regular receptacle you've got silver terminals and you've got copper terminals but on the back of a GFCI you've got something else that says line and load oh boy here we go All right. now if you get the line and the load mixed up this won't work uh -huh. so on this particular one, you see this little piece of tape that says attention. Uh -huh. It's telling you that that is the load side of the receptacle. So you wonder, well, what do you mean by load? What is that all about? Well, I'll keep it simple. Yep. Line mean that's the line coming in. That's bringing you the juice in. Right. And that hooks up first, and you hook it to these two terminals on the bottom, and you'll put the black wire on the copper side and you'll put the white wire uh, under the silver side. Now the load is whatever else is on down the line because most of the time you'll have a uh, receptacle that will feed four, five, six other receptacles. Yeah. And uh, so the load is everything that's tied to it. And you'll put that under these top terminals. And uh, so you would just peel this tape off, and uh, you've got two lugs that look just like the other ones, except at the top, it says on the back side of it, if you look real close, it says load, yeah. where the one at the bottom says line. If you reversed those and got them backwards, this wouldn't work. Okay. And that's what mixes people up a lot of times is they get their line and their load mixed up. So, now you know just about everything there is to know about a GFCI receptacle. Yeah. And you can change those out just like you would a normal receptacle. Um, as with all of these things I've demonstrated this morning, turn the power off first. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, sure. uh, you, you'll figure that out later the hard way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's but true. turn the power off first, and, and you can take care of a lot of the... Uh, simple electrical problems around the house you know how i can tell if my if my gfci needs resetting in our master bathroom what is that the closet light won't come on there you go it, that's true 
it, when it trips, it's the, the GFCI is like one spot. You got a receptacle, and then the closet light is the next thing on the line. If that thing trips, the closet light will come on. Well, see, you, you find GFCIs on your kitchen circuits yep. and on your bathroom circuits and your outside receptacles. Right. Now, used to, everybody used to tie them all together. So all of a sudden, your hair dryer wouldn't work. <laughs> True. And you start looking at that and you realize that that's tied into your outside receptacle because you was using your electric weed eater while there's dew on the ground out yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it, when one thing goes out, everything goes out. So you might be, have tripped it if, if the receptacle is out in the backyard yeah. or it could be in your garage and yet it made your receptacles down in your bathroom go out. So yep. knowing where these devices are yeah. are very important because they can affect a lot of receptacles in your house. And many a time we have gone trying to find why is this receptacle not working? Yeah. And we look and we look and we look and we will find these GFCI receptacles in some of the most remote places <laughs> behind boxes, yep. behind the freezer in the garage. Uh, out by the frog pond in that backyard, and that controls all the other things tied to it. Yep. So those are those are things you need to know about. Okay. So there we, you uh, go. We have a text coming in on the Victory Honda text line. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, John, it says, John, when I wired my shop many years ago, I think I used yellow Romex. Everything was inspected and approved, but now I'm wondering, did I mess up? All 110 outlets with power tools no you did fine yeah the, the the yellow is a 20 amp circuit that's very common it'll be tied into like a 20 amp breaker and um you, you did you did fine uh, i don't think i'd worry about anything so don't worry about that all right got a couple of calls coming in here also john let me get up here and grab this uh this first one here and uh should be there now Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. John, uh, hey. I'm seeing people put on put on tin roofs and not putting what slats under it, or just putting some kind of vapor barrier or something. I've been told that's wrong in the past. Has that thinking changed? Well, not really. Uh, if they're putting it down on felt paper. That has been deemed to be allowable. Now, what you can't do is put it down on top of shingles because the rocks on those shingles will scratch the back of the, uh, the tin and uh, get beyond that galvaloon finished and it will start rusting. Uh, I prefer it to go on slats because if it ever starts sweating, it'll dry out if it's got a little... Uh, little gap in between it to where it can breathe but some people are putting it down on top i knew you said that before i heard yeah uh now some people are putting it down on top of ice and water shield and it's technically okay because the ice and water shield doesn't have the grit in it that will uh will, will cause it to to scratch on the back side but uh you know i just find it a good practice to put it down on slats Okay. Thank right. you. Thank All you, right. caller. Appreciate that. Hey. Yes. You still there? Okay. Well, I think I think we we, we dropped. Let me, All right. Uh, let me go. We have a, we had another, another All right. call. Let's Hold take it. another call. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. All right. Do it one more time, John. Welcome to Tricks morning, of the Trade. I got one more question for you, John. Okay. What you got? Went to Wal uh, Walmart. Went to uh, Lowe's. It's been a good while back. Wanted to buy me another pair of Klein nine inch, you know, lineman pliers with the crimp tool on it. Right. You know, a little thing where you can crimp your. All they have is South Wire, and they're asking the same price as what the Klein pliers are. Right. What's your opinion of South Wire tools? Well, I'm a little stuck in my ways. I prefer the Klein, and that's why I don't buy the other ones. Uh, they just. Right. The south wire seems to be they're the just junk. a little stiffer. The, what? the the Klein yeah. you can still buy those out at Stanford Electric on on Airways out here. Yes. They they got a full line and right. and uh, 
matter of fact, the tools that I'm showing on the show this morning, they're all Klein tools. And uh, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know that Southwire, uh, as far as the way it's made, I don't know if it's any better or any worse, but it just seems like they operate better. They, they're a little better lubed. They look cheap. Well, but they ask the same price what they're asking for the client. Yeah, well, I I didn't know if you used them or what your opinion was. I, I don't use them. I use the client. Oh, yeah. There you go. There right. you go. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you, John. Uh huh. Thank you. All right, John. Another another call holding here. Let me get it in the queue for you here and go for it. All right. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Yes, sir. Good morning. I was going to follow up about your GFCIs, Charlie. Uh-huh understand here um so it actually is generally the first device on a circuit after the breaker correct so everything downstream would go inactive so it's kind of like an additional circuit breaker it doesn't have to be first but everything downstream drops off everything upstream stays hot Right. Now, you know, the, the, the line coming in, if it's the first thing in the circuit, that's your line coming in, and it will protect that receptacle and everything downstream from it. If you put it in a receptacle okay. ahead of it, it's not protecting it. It only gotcha. protects gotcha. the load yeah, side. I'm not sure how this these circuits are wired in this house, so that would explain several odd things. Thank right. you much. Okay, thank you for calling. Thank you, caller. Appreciate that. We've got about uh, about three and a half minutes left in the show. I need to take one quick commercial break, and we'll be back to wrap this thing up with John Allen on Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fats, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced We Have a Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503- 4277. You'll be glad you did. Attention. Do you owe back taxes, fines, and penalties to the IRS? The IRS now offers new relief options for taxpayers affected by COVID-19, but you can't go it alone. Call Tax Solutions now. Our team of former IRS agents and tax professionals can get you the best deal. We know the COVID-19 rules. Call us and never speak to the IRS again. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. The virus has caused the IRS to take extensive action to help taxpayers. So if you owe $10,000 or more, this is the best time in years to settle your tax debt. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. Remember, the IRS will not give up until you pay. Call 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. 800-383-8177. we got about two minutes left in the Tricks of the Trade show for this Saturday morning. John, you had another little piece of equipment over there we need to get right quick. Yeah, we're going to... Back in... Back when everything was metal and not plastic, you had these receptacle boxes and switch boxes that were in your walls. You'll see these a lot in uh, plaster walls, older homes. And one of the most aggravating things that you could run into is getting one of these loose in the wall. And it just kind of, you know, wiggles around and (laughs) does that. And uh, you got to get them stabilized in order to get your receptacle to stay in the wall. Right. So if you've got a perfectly good hole in your wall and a box in it, we had a little device that we used, and they were called battleship clips. Now, 
you ask a younger person what these are and they'll stare at you and say do what but these little things are called battleship clips and uh this is a pair right here there's two of them so you'll break them apart first and the reason they're called battleship clips is the way they're shaped they look like a an old style steam battleship going uh in the ocean you know right but they are the tool you need to hold a box in the wall. If you put this box in the wall and you slid that little battleship clip in there like that, brought it up and dropped it down, right? and the back side of this clip would be against the back side of your sheetrock. And then all you'd have to do is fold over these two clips like that. And there is no way you can pull that box out of the wall. Wow. Now, they got all kinds of little fast, fancy fasteners and sprues that you use, but get back to the basics. This will do the job. Man, I'm telling you, we had more information than we had time today. But we'll pick it up next week at 8 o'clock here on 93.1. And we call it Tricks of the Trade for good reason. John Allen is the host, and we'll see you next week if everything uh, goes well. I'll be here. All right. See you later.